Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. We have already covered videos on cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, predictive platforms for Bitcoin price, cryptocurrency mining and so on, in which we also interact with the most used hashing algorithms in crypto world, such as SHA-256, Cryptonite, Ethash, Script and X11 algorithm. So, Today we will be covering in-depth knowledge of what SHA-256 and how Bitcoin mining works. Let's take a look at the topics to be covered in today's video. We will gonna see what exactly is mining algorithms. Then we take a look at SHA-256 and its step by step execution. Then we learn about the Bitcoin mining along with the example. So, Let's see one by one. Normally, these algorithms are cryptographic hash functions. They can adjust the mining difficulty, a process that makes it more or less difficult for you to put together the puzzles that must be solved by the miners. This is to get miners to do complex computational work that once solved allows them to access a reward for that work. SHA-256 is considered the most widely used hashing function in the world. This function was created by the National Security Agency and published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in 2001. Since 2002, it became a federal standard for information processing. With the birth of Bitcoin, SHA-256 became the mining algorithm used in blockchain technology. It serves multiple purposes within Bitcoin and virtually all existing cryptocurrencies, from ensuring the identification of each block hashing addresses and other blockchain data to serving as proof of work in mining, there is no doubt that SHA-256 is multifaceted. SHA-256 stands for Secure Hash Algorithm that belongs to SHA-2 family. It generates 256-bit signature for a text string. Its block processing time is generally around 7 minutes and require hash rates at giga hashes per second. Some of the other cryptocurrencies that are mined using these algorithms are Bitcoin, Joolcoin, Deocoin, Xcoin, Terracoin, Battlecoin, 21coin, Peercoin, Namecoin and so on. Let's see step by step execution of SHA-256 hash of hello world. In step 1 that is pre-processing, we have to first convert hello world into binary then append a single one then we have to pad with zeros until data is multiple of 512 less 64 bits here we required 448 bits then we have to append 64 bits to the end where the 64 bits are a big endian integer representing the length of the original input in binary in our case 88 or in binary it's 1011000. Now we have our input which will always be evenly divisible by 512. In step 2, initialize hash values H. Now we create 8 hash values. These are hard coded constants that represent the first 32 bits of the fractional parts of the square roots of the first 8 primes. That is 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17 and 19. Step 3. Initialize round constants k. Similar to step 2, we are creating some constants. This time, there are 64 of them. Each value from 0 to 63 is the first 32 bits of the fractional parts of the cube roots of the 64 primes. That is from 2 to 311. Step 4 is chunk loop. The following steps will be happen for each 512 bit chunk of data from our input. In our case, because hello world is so short, we only have one chunk. At each iteration of the loop, we will be mutating the hash values H0 to H7, which will be the final output. Step 5. Create message schedule W. Copy the input data from step 1 into a new array where each entry is a 32-bit word. Add 48 more words initialized to 0, such that we have an array 
w of 0 to 63. Modify the zero indexes at the end of the array using this algorithm. The step 6 is compression. Initialize variables a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h and set them equal to the current hash values respectively. That is h0, h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6 and h7. Then run the compression loop. The compression loop will mutate the values of a to h. Here you are seeing the compression loop. Now let's go through the first iteration. All addition is calculated by 2 modulo 32. That entire calculation is done 63 more times, modifying the variables a to h throughout. We won't do it by hand, but we would have to enter it. In step 7, modify final values. After the compression loop, but still within the chunk loop, we modify the hash values by adding their respective variables to them, a to h. As usual, all addition is 2 modulo 32. Here our last or eighth step, that is concatenate final hash. Last but not the least, slap them all together, a simple string concatenation will do. Here is our final output. Now let's see what is Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining is the process by which new bitcoins are entered into circulation. It is also the way that new transactions are confirmed by the network and a critical component of the maintenance and development of the blockchain ledger. What they are actually doing is trying to be the first miner to come up with a 64 digit hexadecimal number that is a hash that is less than or equal to the target hash. Miners are basically minting currency. The first rule of the Bitcoin system is that there can be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins generated. As of September 2021, there were around 18.82 million Bitcoins in circulation out of an ultimate total of 21 million. The reward for Bitcoin mining are reduced by half roughly every 4 years. When Bitcoin was first mined in 2009, mining one block would earn you 50 Bitcoin. In 2012, this was half to 25 Bitcoin. By 2016, this was half again to 12.5 Bitcoin. On May 11, 2020, the reward halved again to 6.25 Bitcoin. In September of 2021, the price of Bitcoin was about $45,000 per Bitcoin, which means you would have earned $281,250, that is the multiplication of Bitcoin price and Bitcoin reward, for completing a block. Now the question arises: how Bitcoin mining works or how to mine Bitcoin. Like we discussed earlier in my previous video, the example that whoever first discovered the number from 0 to 10 takes the price. You can check out the link in description box below. Let's say I tell three friends that I am thinking of a number between 1 to 100 and I write that number on a piece of paper and seal it in an envelope. My friends don't have to guess the exact number but they just have to be first person guess any number that is less than or equal to the number I am thinking of and there is no limit to how many guesses they get. It's just a matter of guesswork or randomness. But with the total number of possible guesses for each of these problems being on the order of trillions, it's incredibly odious work. Okay, let's say I am thinking of number 19. If my friend Amrita guesses 21. She loses because 21 is greater than 19. If uh, Bob guesses 16 and uh, Tina guesses 12, then they have both theoretically arrived at viable answer because of 16 is less than 19 and 12 is also less than 19. There is no extra credit for Bob even though Bob's answer was closer to the target answer of 19. Now imagine that I post the guess what number 
I am thinking of question. But I am not asking just three friends. And I am not thinking of a number between 1 to 100. Rather, I am asking millions of would be minors. And I am thinking of a 64 digit hexadecimal number. Now you see that it's going to be extremely hard to guess the right answer. If Bob and Tina both answer simultaneously, then the analogy breaks down. In Bitcoin terms, simultaneous answer occur frequently. But uh, at the end of the day, there can be one winning answer. When multiple simultaneous answers are presented that are equal to or less than the target number, the Bitcoin network will decide by a simple majority, that is 51%, which minor to honor. Typically, it is the miner who has done the most work or in other words, the one that verifies the most transactions. The losing block then becomes an orphan block. Orphan blocks are those that are not added to the blockchain. Miners who successfully solve the hash problem but who haven't verified the most transactions are not rewarded with the Bitcoin. Remember that analogy where the number 19 was written on a piece of paper and put it in the sealed envelope. In Bitcoin mining terms, that metaphorical undisclosed number in the envelope is called the target hash. What miners are doing with those huge computers and dozens of cooling fans is guessing at the target hash. Miners make these guesses by randomly generating as many nonces as possible as fast as possible. Now, how do I guess at the target hash? All target hashes begin with the string of leading zeros. There is no minimum target, but there is a maximum target set by the Bitcoin protocol. No target can be greater than this number. The winning hash for a Bitcoin miner is one that has at least the minimum number of leading zeros. Define the mining difficulty. For example, here is a hexadecimal value. Let's consider it as a target hash. And these are some possible solutions from miner's side. First, check the target hash. Here, our first condition is the target hash has 17 zeros. So, all right answers need to have at least 17 zeros. Let's check each value one by one. In first case, it has only 16 zeros. That means it disqualified. Next, check another option. It consists 17 zeros. Then it will go further. And third one also has 17 zeros. That means it also have possibilities. Our second condition is in target hash the 18th digit is 5. Here in second option it is D at 18th position which in hexadecimal is 13. This is larger than the 18th digit of the target value that is 5. Hence it is also disqualified. Let's go for another one. Let's check here. At 18th position, it's 4, which means that 4 is, 4 is smaller than 5 or smaller than the target hash. This means that and get there before any other miners and get paid 12.5 BTC. That means that this hash is viable and win the price. To find such a hash value, you have to get a fast mining rig or more realistically join a mining pool. A group of coin miners who combine their computing power and split the mine Bitcoin. Let me show you a real blog on the site blockchain.com. You are looking at the summary of everything that happened when block 490163 was mined. Here is the information about this block. That block was mined on October 16, 2017 by Antpool. Let me show you 
it is the target hash that term and pool refer to the fact that this particular block was completed by and pool one of the more successful mining pool as you can see here their contribution to the bitcoin community is that they confirm 1768 transactions for this block and here is the mathematical value of how hard it is to find valid hash for this block this difficulty level then root node of merkle tree version bits required then size of the block this is the nonce that generated the winning hash then transaction volume total amount of transactions in this block block reward that time block reward was 12.5 because in 2016 the block reward became half of 25 that is 12.5 here is the fee reward that's amount of transaction fees rewarded to the miner for calculating the hash for this block and here are the other block transactions done by and pool you can check it out the link is already given in description box i hope you got this if you want to know more about the blockchain technology you can check out my other videos so that's all about this video guys i really hope that you would like it if you do then please like share and don't forget to subscribe to my channel